Hello, you're listening to Hugo Talks. So we have had the jab minister in the House of Commons confirming what Boris Johnson said the other day, that double jab passports will be needed for nightclubs. But also now they are saying it's for churches and cinemas and a negative test is not sufficient. As it says here, Nadim Zahawi confirms the vaccine passport rollout in the UK and basically confirms tyranny. For the UK. He also reiterates double jabs becoming a condition of entry at any venue where large crowds gather and interact, such as churches, cinemas, and nightclubs. Churches. They want it so you have to get double jabs to be allowed to go to church. The puppet says, We reserve the right to mandate its use in the future. This week, after a successful trial, we have rolled out the NHS COVID pass. This allows people safely and securely to demonstrate their COVID status, whether it's proof of vaccination status, test results, or natural immunity. People will also be able to demonstrate proof of a negative test result. Although we don't encourage its use in essential settings like supermarkets, other businesses and organisations in England can adopt the pass as a means of entry where it's suitable for their venue or premises, and when they can see its potential to keep their clients or their customers safe. But for proprietors of venues and events where large numbers are likely to gather and likely to mix with people from outside their households for prolonged periods, deploying the pass is the right thing to do. The pass has an important role to play in slowing the spread of the virus, and so we reserve the right to mandate its use in the future. Next, Mr Speaker, I'd like to update the House on vaccination as a condition of entry. At the end of September, we plan to make full vaccination a condition of entry to those high-risk settings where large crowds gather and interact. As a condition of entry to these venues, people will need to show that they are fully vaccinated and proof of a negative test will no longer be sufficient. Look, like I said before, this to me is a declaration of war on the public. This is an outright grab at taking away your freedom. They're saying, take this injection or we will take away your freedom. It's as simple as that. That's it really. That's where it's gonna go as well to probably even more lengths, even by their standards of bullshit, it doesn't make any sense, seeing that they continually tell us that you can still transmit it if you've had the jab. So what's the point of this? Well, it seems the point is, it's about control and enslavement through a digital app. That's what it seems to be about. And it's not just the UK, it's everywhere else. Okay, it's not, you know, it's everywhere, Ireland. Ireland had their president sign a law the other day, which means unjabbed people cannot now go into a pub or a restaurant. Same thing as they are planning in the UK. Same thing in Australia, New Zealand. Look at France. What are they doing? They're doing the same thing. In France, there are people calling for revolution. Well, if there is going to be a revolution, it needs to be a worldwide revolution revolution because at the moment even though all of these governments across the world are run by supposedly individual governments and supposedly individual different people their actions don't show that at all they are all following the same rules they are all following the same blueprint they are all doing the same thing clearly we are being dictated to around the world by a world shadow government it must be Now, there are protests now, freedom marches all over the world this Saturday, and never has there been a more important time than now. There are worldwide freedom rallies everywhere. UK, London, Dublin, Ireland, Belfast, Northern Ireland, Amsterdam, Netherlands, Brisbane, Australia, Italy, France, Canada, everywhere. And all the different locations for worldwide freedom rallies can be found on Telegram. Now, I know a lot of people have said these protests are not going to change anything. They're a waste of time. Look, we've got to be positive, okay? Things have to grow. Look at the protests early last year in the UK and look how they have grown over time. 
they've gotten massive as things have become more and more clearer. If anything, think of them as a way of gauging just how many people are on our side who are seeing things the same way as we do. It's clear that mainstream media don't want the normies to see how big the protests have gotten. That's why they shut out that story on the news. Think of them as a way of collectively taking stock of what's going on. Think of the protest as a way of meeting others and planning ahead. And think of them as a way of sending a message to not necessarily not to not necessarily the governments of your country because they don't give a stuff. What's the point? Think of them as a way of sending a message to the people of the country that are not aware of what is going on. If you saw the New Zealand video I put up earlier on hugotalks.com, the people are finding ways of delivering the message to the public. The messages that the governments around the world are trying to block out. We need to find a way of reaching out to those who are still asleep. All of these rules and regulations at the moment, no matter where you are, you know, the UK, Australia, these France, these rules and regulations, they are really being rushed in as if they've got some kind of timeline. And a load of these normies, and I've seen them, I've seen them talking on Twitter, people who are all for beginning the jab, they are asking questions. They are saying, this doesn't seem right, something is up. So don't give up on them yet. We need as many of them on our side as possible. So stay strong. Keep the faith, as always. Thanks for listening, and come and subscribe to hugotalks.com, a place for like-minded souls who don't follow the fake stream media. Thank you.